Hey guys, I wanted to show you today. Uh, a lot of you have checker plate out there, and uh, some of it might look like this. Um, so this is off of a uh, Peterbilt. Um, most checker, almost all checker plate, uh, is uh, pretty much the same. Um, so, anyways, how how to restore it here? Um, give you guys a quick video, and hope it helps someone out out there. Um, so first thing is, uh, before you really want to do any kind of polishing, is uh, you want to have it somewhat clean. Um, this is just some uh, paint thinner that I spray on there. Give it a quick wipe. Doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, I'm gonna try to get rid of most of your most of your dirt. Um, the thinner also helps. Uh, it helps kind of break up any of this. Uh, any of your grease and dirt and stuff in there um, that you want to try to polish out anyhow I just find it helps to uh, loosen it up a little bit um, definitely doesn't hurt there's another purpose to the thinner here I'll show you in a second so that's your step one um, your next step and it's always up to the individual but uh, you do want to wear a mask if you got one I wear a full face so and earmuffs. Um, I do this for a living, so I mean, uh, I, uh, I definitely try to take care of uh, safety that way. It's up to you guys. Oh, um, safety glasses is recommended as well if you're not going to wear a full face helmet because uh, you don't want the stuff shooting in your eyes. But anyhow, um, so before I get masked up here, what I'm going to do is I'm taking a uh, brown bar, or brown rouge, this one's a little small, I save these scraps for checker plate mat, and I'll be running a uh, an orange pad. It's, uh, it's a cutting pad, it's aggressive, and it goes with this bar. Um, you can also use a purple pad, it's a cutting pad as well, um, with the brown bar. Um, there's a number of different things out there that you can mix. Uh, um, I don't want to go into too much detail. So anyways, brown bar today, orange pad. I'm going to cut it, as you'll see in the video, this way. And what a lad will do is get, uh, get this edge of the checker plate polished. Then I'll come back with the pad angle this way, which will get this edge of it polished. And then I'll finish it straight up and down um, one one swipe. It blends everything in. Now, when I'm polishing, just to save uh, save your rouge, um, and it helps helps you not have to put so much on the pad. I will give it a light spray with thinner, and then I'll get geared up here, and you'll see I'll shoot the rouge into it, and the or the brown bar, and the and it'll stick to the aluminum because I got that thinner on there and then I don't have to keep reapplying uh, so much polish so I'm gonna go ahead do this spot um, and uh, um, then we'll go on to the next step
Hey guys, so that's your your first uh, cut, um, as they call it. Um, you get a fairly nice shine. Uh, you can get quite a bit deeper. On checker plate, it's not quite so noticeable. Um, you know, a lot of guys, uh, a lot of guys would probably call it quits there. The uh, the only thing is, is once you get your cutting is by far your hardest part of uh, any um, aluminum, um, especially checker plate, because once you once you get it smoothed out like this, um, the next steps are easy, which I will show you. Um, one quick thing I wanted to mention there, if you noticed at the beginning of the video, um, I sprayed uh, the brown rouge on here. And then as I was going, you noticed I came with the bottle and sprayed sprayed more on there, uh, more thinner on there. The reason I did that is because as I was going, it was getting gumped up in there. Um, so by spraying that thinner, it liquefies it a bit. And then uh, it, it helps you flow flow through the checker um, much easier. So I'll go ahead and um, cut this whole piece. Um, and then I'll come back to you and, uh, show you the next step. Okay guys, so that is, uh, done. As you can see, I cut it all. Um, I had a problem with my, uh, camera there, so, um, if you can just focus maybe on this this piece here, I'll show you. Um, so once once we have uh, have it all cut, um, what we do is we go ahead and wipe it down. Um, the reason behind this is because your rouge um, will get caught in a lot of these. Uh, well, in the in the metal in general, um, on the edges of this diamond and and this way. Um, and when we go to the next step, we just want to be using one rouge um, at a time. So if we have leftover rouge on there, in theory, we're polishing both. So this isn't always necessary. A lot of you might call this uh, good and done, uh, you know, depending on what what uh, what you're using it for or, or how much time you want to spend. But uh, um, the next step is uh, this yellow. We're going to go to the yellow bar and yellow pad. Now what this does is it gives it a um, gloss while still cutting the aluminum. The uh, If you look at it like sandpaper, the brown is like a uh, 120 grit where the yellow is more of a 320. Um, it also gives the aluminum color, um, and when when they talk about coloring in polishing, it's basically you know your gloss, um, your reflect your the mirror like image um, that everyone is shooting for. Um, so I'll go ahead and give this a, a go here, and if you just watch this section here, um, you'll be able to see. The difference, um, or I hope you can with the camera, definitely can in real life. Um, it's got a nice shine, um, but you'll see once I run this yellow over it, it gives it a really nice shine. Um, the other, the other thing the yellow will do is if we did miss some spots or whatever, and you know maybe went a little too fast or didn't spend enough time. It'll still cut those out, but at the same time, we're still going to get the gloss um, out of the yellow. So I'll go ahead and uh, cut this piece, or uh, yellow pad, an intermediate cut, um, and then we'll go from there. Okay.
Okay, guys, so as you can see, or I hope you can see, um, that yellow gave us a really nice um, reflection in there. It just, it, it really brings out the, uh, that shine in the aluminum. Uh, the thing I wanted to mention is if, if you have made it past our first step of step one, as you can see, it just continues to get easier um, as we go. It's, it's very quick uh, process now because um, we got all the imperfections out of the aluminum with our cut. So now it's uh, a matter of coloring and, and uh, it's, it's just a lot quicker process and it's, it's really worth the time um, for the results you get for the extra little time spent. But I, I mean, again, it's up to you. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and yellow pad this whole piece. Um, come back and show you the uh, uh, final step and then we're done. Okay guys, so I went ahead and uh, yellow padded that. Um, now we're down to the finishing step, which is real quick. So I'll show you. So now again, we want to spray it with our thinner. Um, give it a quick wipe. It's the same principle. What this does is uh, we're going up to another step. So we want to try to get as much of our yellow, yellow polish off of the surface as we can. Now for this step, we'll be using a white pad, which is very soft. Um, there's a few different kinds. This one's a little hard. Um, I left my other one at the shop uh, for for this video, but uh, it, it still works. It's it's a very it's a fin it's called a finishing pad. It's very soft. We're using that with a blue bar. Um, some guys use white. It's up to the individual, really. I mean, white, blue. Um, I find the blue gives a better shine. That's just my opinion, but uh, I know other polishers, they're dead set on the white, which does a good job as well. Um, so this polish is like a, you're finishing sanding, I guess, would be a you know, thousand grit or, or whatever. It does no cutting at all. Um, if you've missed anything with cutting at this point, uh, you need to go back because uh, this polish, it won't cut. It strictly colors, um, but it really gives it a nice gloss. So I'll go ahead. I got it wiped off. Um, I'll put some polish on here. Um, for this process, you don't need to go back and forth because we're not cutting. Like I said, we're just coloring. We're giving it gloss. Um, so we'll just go straight up and down in one swoop. The reason that we do want to do one swoop is so that everything is consistent. With checker plate, you don't really notice, but it is good practice. If you were to do a, a tank or a flat piece of aluminum, you definitely have to go in one, one swoop. Otherwise, you'll see a where you stop and start, stop, start, you'll see the lines in there. Um, so I'll go ahead and, and do this real quick and then show you the very final uh, step and should be good to go. One other thing I forgot to mention was with the white pad, um, I like to slow the RPM down around 1800 or so um, I know other polishers they run at full speed uh, again it's it's technique I, I find it works better make sure you got lots of polish compound on your pad um, and run it at 1800 that that's the way I do it and it seems to work well so
Okay, so as you guys can see, it's very, very quick. Um, gives it a really nice finish. I'll show you a couple different angles. I'm not sure how good the light is on the camera there. Um, anyhow, now that that's done, that's our last step. So what we want to do is take some gun wash. Um, your paint thinner will work. It's just you'd have to have two rags, and uh, um, the reason the gun wash works so quick is because it evaporates. It does the same thing as thinner in theory, but it uh, the gun wash evaporates a lot quicker. Whereas the thinner, you're always trying to get your smears out. Uh, anyhow, what we do now is take some gun wash and you spray it on liberally and we give it a wipe now the reason we're doing this you may think well you know the piece is done we're not going to go any more steps on it so you know, why is the guy wiping it off well there's two reasons the first reason is if you are handling this or giving it to customer or whatnot um, you want to use the gun wash to clean it because as you can see you get a ton of black off there so if you give this to somebody you know in, in essence their hands will be black uh, now the other reason is because any rouge that we have left on here really takes away from our polish um, because it's black, I mean, it, it, we're trying to get a mirror, and yet we have, you know, traces of black on there, which is no good. So this final step really, really finishes it off. Um, so what I do, I got most of the rouge out, now I take the dry side of the rig, got some smears and that on there. Well, we just buff it out like you would, would a mirror or any other piece like that. And that's about all there is to it, guys. Um, might sound like a lot, but just make sure your cut's good and um, get rid of these results with any piece of checker, really, uh, for the most part. Um, I'll show you a few different angles here now instead of this boring same one. Now there is still some pitting in that in it. Um, it is going on a Peterbilt and not to say that that doesn't matter but the truck is quite quite old so this this thing hasn't this particular piece of uh, of checker hasn't seen a polish in almost 15 years uh, whereas if you know a guy polishes metal or the metal once in a while you can you know, it comes out a lot smoother. Um, but uh, yeah, that's about it. There is for checker guys. Um, I'll see. Hopefully, I can get a few videos uploaded for you the uh, this week on how to do some smooth aluminum, and then I can really show you the different uh, the way the different steps of bring out the different glosses in here. Um, anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, hope it helps someone out a little bit.